you may or may not find out that only some of your episodes need a disclaimer. Maybe others don't. Maybe you only need a disclaimer when you say these things. It just depends on your podcast, what genre you're in, and how much protection you're going to have. Most hosts never achieve the results they hoped for. They're falling short on listenership and monetization, meaning their message isn't being heard and their show ends up costing them money. This podcast was created to help you grow your listenership and make money while you're at it. Get ready to take notes. Here's your host, Adam Adams. What's up, podcaster? It's Adam A. Adams, the host of the podcast on podcasting. And today we're just going to be talking about disclaimers for your podcast. In fact, as I record this, I'm considering adding some disclaimers to this podcast. Every now and again, I will like say a brief disclaimer, but I realize that I haven't been using very many disclaimers. And it's kind of interesting. I've had a couple of clients. One of our clients, she joined our team after they had been going for like over a year, but her podcast wasn't really getting like any real results. They only had, she and her podcast only had a few downloads per episode and it just wasn't getting the traction that she wanted. And she hadn't yet accomplished some of the cool things that she did end up accomplishing after her podcast started getting really well known. So we started working for her and like promoting her podcast, getting out in front of new people. We're doing like a private message campaign where somebody on my team is PMing and DMing like individuals on three different platforms like Meetup, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And we're going to where her perfect avatar, we're just starting natural conversations and eventually, not marriage on the first date, but eventually letting them know that we heard a podcast episode that we think that might help them, asking them if they want us to send it. And so we're doing all this work for her. We're doing Facebook ads. One of the Facebook ads was amazing because this Facebook ad ended up having over a thousand shares. My Facebook ad guy does a really good job. He's always split testing different things. And all of our clients at the level that Crystal was doing, is doing, all of our clients at that same level as Crystal, who's the person we're talking about today, they have somebody on my team that does Facebook ads. We have somebody that does private messaging. The point is that this stuff is starting to work. And her podcast is now ranking the top 1% in the world, which never happened before. She's got like 10 times the listener base that she used to have, 10 times the ranking that she used to have. And it's kind of cool is shortly after some of this success that she's having, she applied to do a TED Talk. And wouldn't you know it, they saw her podcast, they saw her other content, they got her application, they actually approved. And she just recently did a TED Talk, which is freaking badass. I'm so excited for her. And even more recently, I believe this is the story. I'd have to double check with her, but she didn't know that she was featured in Forbes. She had no idea. She told me that it was like her friends, a couple of her friends had called her and said, oh my gosh, how did you get in Forbes? And she's like, what? I was featured in Forbes. Now, granted, people can pay. People can pay Forbes to publish them. Obviously, she didn't know that since she didn't even know that even... Obviously, she didn't do that because she didn't even know she was in there until her friends told her. And she's like, what? Let me see the article. And she's featured in Forbes. And I'm sure that she's doing a lot of cool things right. She's doing great on social media. But one of the things that she's doing really well is the promotion of the podcast. Working with our team, her podcast is like growing. It's getting in front of people. And now she's getting all these cool things. Like for the first time, she's making money with the podcast. She has sponsors trying to work with her. She actually can't always work with all of the sponsors. She's now had a TED Talk. She's featured in Forbes. Some cool stuff. All right. Now she says to me, I'm connecting with some of these publicists. I've just had the wife of Matthew McConaughey on my podcast. I had this other famous person, this other famous person. And my attorney is telling me I need to have a disclaimer. So that's what we're talking about. Her attorney is like, I need to have a disclaimer. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I probably need to have a disclaimer too. So I'm bringing you along with in my journey of being a better podcaster and doing things better. And I spoke with my attorney and he agreed, I've got to have a disclaimer. 
So I'm going to try to get one. Hopefully going to happen around this episode or slightly after. Crystal is trying to get her disclaimer. She called me the other day. I try to give my clients a lot of time whenever they need me. So she's got access to my cell phone. And I was walking, I was shopping at the grocery store and I was just walking with my cart and I saw her text and she's like, hey, can you talk? And I text her back. I said, call me now. I can talk now. So here I am walking through the aisles, getting some groceries for me and the kids. And her biggest concern was she doesn't want it to be too much of a disclaimer. Okay. So here we are in this dilemma of how do we make our attorney happy? And how do we make ourselves happy? How do we make our listener happy? Because we've got to make everybody kind of like happy or at least satisfied, like at least okay. We basically don't want to turn, we don't want to offend our listener with too much of a disclaimer. And so this is what we're having a conversation with. And I remember it clearly because I was shopping for the chips and the fruit around the time of this conversation. And she's basically saying like, I don't want it to be too long. I don't want it to be too much. What do you think it needs to have? And we're going through this back and forth and she's resistant to it because she's feeling like, I don't want people to be swimming upstream to listen to my podcast. I don't want it to be too much. I don't want to be too long. Should it go at the beginning? Should it go in the end? And that's when I decided I'm going to connect with my listener. I'm going to try to give you all the info that you need on having a disclaimer. First and foremost, your podcast should be for, quote, write this down, talk to your attorney about it. Your podcast should be for educational or entertainment purposes. Educational or entertainment purposes. My podcast should be for that, for those purposes. My podcast, same with yours, is not legal advice. It is not tax advice. It is not business advice. These are ideas. And you need to consult with your own counsel. That's You need to consult with your own attorney. You need to consult with your own doctor. Before you do a plant-based diet, before you go a vegetarian, all meat, a vegan diet, before you try pagan diet or no, paleo, (laughs) sorry, before you try the paleo diet, before you try the keto diet, before you try intermittent fasting, before you try whatever, fruitarian diet, before you try these glasses, these sunglasses that we're talking about, the Blu-ray, or they help you with to sleep better, or they get rid of your headaches. Before you do these things, before you start your podcast, before you invest in real estate and before you invest in crypto, you need to let your listener know, like, look, this, we can only go so far on the podcast. It's for education or entertainment purposes only. Consult your own advisor, consult your own CPA before you do this tax advice, consult your own counsel before you do this, consult your doctor before you change your diet. Some of this stuff doesn't work. So you want to give a disclaimer like that, okay? It's not advice. It's not business advice. It's not do this at your own risk. Consult your own professionals. These are some of the things that you want to say. So, and it honestly just depends like on your podcast. Like, are you teaching about food? Are you teaching about exercise? Because like, look, doing bench press is not good for everybody. Some people have a bad shoulder. Some people have a bad elbow, a wrist, some people, whatever. Like You can't tell people to bench press or squat or deadlift or eat fruit or eat bread or eat only protein and just expect everybody to blanket statement, just do it. Because somebody might have, for example, diabetes, type 1 diabetes, and maybe maybe having 25% of their diet or 35% of their diet being grains isn't actually going to benefit them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just got to be thoughtful. So anyway, at the end of this episode, the place that I want you to go, my call to action to you, my CTA for you is to consider a disclaimer and to know that the views and opinions expressed on this are that of the guest alone. The opinions are of the host alone. The views and the opinion, you cannot hold us harmless. There's all sorts of stuff. So speak with your attorney. The call to action is consider doing a disclaimer. Speak with the correct type of attorney that's going to be able to help you. 
to make sure that nothing that your listener does can fall back on you legally. The third is try to do your best at appeasing both your attorney and your listener. You don't want to make your attorney be like, you're putting this at too much risk. And you don't want your listener to be like, man, this is too much. Okay. So you got to find that balance on your own with your counsel. That's my disclaimer for you. You've got to figure that stuff out with your counsel. And last and final thing is you may or may not, based on whatever your attorney says, you may or may not find out that only some of your episodes need a disclaimer. Maybe others don't. Maybe you only need a disclaimer when you say these things. It just depends on your podcast, what genre you're in, and how much protection you're going to have. But then the last consideration, the last, last, last thing is, should the disclaimer come in the beginning, middle, or end? Now, I am not an attorney, so don't trust me automatically. But I'm going to say that from what I spoke with Crystal and my own attorney is that it is okay for our two podcasts to have the disclaimer at the end of all episodes. Basically, don't take this as business advice. Your situation might be different, et cetera. So I'm building my disclaimer. It's going to go at the end of our podcast episodes. It's probably going to have the micro machine guy reading it. What I mean by that, for those of you who are too young to know, micro machine guy speaks really, really, really fast. And so he just basically gets out the legal disclaimer super duper fast and doesn't really bother anybody. But I'm probably going to have the micro machine guy read my disclaimer and it's just going to keep me protected. And I'm going to put it at the end. Now with Crystal, hers is a little bit different because there is a couple of things that she's using a disclaimer for. A, she has some guests where she really needs to be clear that it's not medical advice. It's education. So she's going to have some of her episodes because we actually also, we do a marketing for her podcast. We also do all the post-production. We do our editing plus packages. But the point is that she's going to tell us if she wants it done in the beginning on some episodes. So it's like, hey, before we get started in this episode, the views and opinions are expressed, blah, 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 blah. All right. The last disclaimer, because that was the last of that piece of the topic, but there is another disclaimer that you're going to want to consider. And it's just the cussing. I don't have a disclaimer for my cussing. I am actually starting to consider it where it says like this episode has some adult language, listener discretion is advised. So if I ever have like, I'll say a lot of cuss words, as you probably know, I don't think I've ever, ever, ever said the F-bomb on any of my podcast episodes ever. It's possible. I don't necessarily recall it. But the point is, some things can offend some people. And so things that you might consider to do on that is depending on who your audience, who your listener, and how offensive your language might be. You might even have in the beginning, it just say, hey, there's adult language or adult content. For example, on this podcast is two women. One is a monogamous mother with the, been with the same guy for all of this time and is the father of her child. And her co-partner is a sex worker. Her co-host is actually a sex worker. So she is a call girl. And these guys get together, these women get together and post this information. And some of it is like listener discretion advice. So that's just an example of the sex worker and this monogamous person. They have these funny stories and it's interesting. It's fun. And in some cases, maybe they need to have like a disclaimer that says, this is like adult content. What we're talking about are things that viewer discretion is advised. And maybe you need to be 18 or older to listen or something like that. So, And then the last thing is making sure to mark episodes and or your whole podcast as explicit content. That is basically using the big letter E. Any single time on this podcast, or at least we try to do this, maybe we've messed one up, but every single time I say shit or damn or some other cuss word, we try to mark it with an E. We try to make sure that it shows that there is explicit content in the episode, explicit language 
in the episode. And if we are talking about like sex workers or whatever, maybe I still in this episode, even if I didn't cuss the couple times that I did, I would want to mar- mark an explicit. Now, if your whole podcast is about, I don't know, open relationships, sex, how you intimacy, I can't think of all the things like whatever, maybe you will have to make an explicit content for your entire podcast so that people understand that viewer, listener discretion is advised. Hey, there's adult content, there's adult language, there's adult conversations. What's his name? Dave Jackson. He's been on this podcast before. I've grown to like the guy a lot. He's started like 30 different podcasts and he's got this podcast that basically like reviews other podcasts. One of the podcasts he reviewed it had the word C-U-M. And it basically, it was a podcast about like male maturity or something like this. And a lot of foul language, if you will, on that podcast more than this one. The point is when he mentioned that, he goes, hey, before I get started, I need to give you a disclaimer that what I'm going to talk about in this podcast episode has some language, some ideas, some words that is best for adults. He said something like this. He's like, I'm warning you. And he gave him some time and he goes, I'm going to give you like five more seconds. And if you don't want to hear this, if you don't want to be part of this, if you're not old enough to hear mature content, then you should log off. And then he he said, now the podcast that I'm reviewing today has a lot of cuss words. And to give you an example of some of the content that you're going to listen to, one of the words of the podcast, the title of the podcast, the name of the podcast is come something. And he goes, and just so you know, that's not spelled the normal way. It's not spelled the normal way. It doesn't mean come here. It means something else. And so let me give you another couple seconds. So anyway, the guy was like as careful as he could to absolutely make sure that if a parent, for example, was listening with their kid next to them, (laughs) and because almost all of his stuff is like PG, Now, all of a sudden, he's got something that's like total rated R. It's just totally about sex and just a bunch of other stuff because these guys drop like a million F-bombs. Anyway, he wanted to make 100% sure that he wasn't going to offend anyone. And by doing that, by taking the extra step, he's going to gain more credibility. He's going to gain more trust from his listener. He's also going to gain more trust from the podcast platforms. Because if you miss an E for explicit language or explicit content, and you're talking about sex and dropping F-bombs and other things like that, you could actually get your entire podcast taken down by not having a disclaimer. Additionally, you could get yourself into trouble by not having a disclaimer. So as you think about these disclaimers, all of the ideas that I brought forth to you in this episode... Again, your call to action is to speak with your attorney to figure out if you're doing it right or not. And if you have like hundreds or dozens of other episodes that you kind of like made these mistakes with, like you were already cussing, you already said shit a lot of times or the F word or whatever it is. And it's in a bunch of previous episodes. It could actually be in your best interest to spend the extra time or pay the extra money to have your editor or to have yourself go in and fix all of these dozens of episodes or hundreds of episodes so that you don't get your podcast taken down. Because especially now, they're coming out with these like spider crawlers. I know this is probably not the right terms. There's these like spider crawling things like these bots that go in, they list, they quote, listen to the episode, they transcribe the episode and they search for like the F word and other types of things, or they might search for just explicit language or explicit content. And the problem is that they're going to start flagging these a lot easier. They're already doing this. They're already listening to it. They're already flagging them. They've already taken lots of podcasts completely down. The problem is you don't get any of the content. You can't save this. If you lose hundreds of episodes or dozens of episodes, it's gone. It's gone for good. And you're probably never going to save that. So it could be in your best interest to go and fix all the explicit stuff and or add a disclaimer either in your show notes and or at the end or and or at the beginning of all 
and or some of your podcast episodes to make sure that you're not hurting people's feelings, breaking the law, making over-promising, under-delivering, making things sound like they are you suggesting things without giving that disclaimer. Blah, blah, blah. Do it. Go forth and win. And I'll see you on the next episode. Oh, hey, because three of my clients came to me recently looking to find a way to have their podcast make the money instead of cost them money. We put together a resource for some of our clients and I want to give it to you as well. It's something that did actually seem to help because one of them is now making $2,600 a month. Another one's $4,500 a month. And the third is making between $5,000 and $10,000 each month. And so it's been a resource that's been incredibly valuable to them. It's our sponsor sheet template. It's a template of a sponsor sheet and it gives you something that you can hand to potential sponsors and hopefully also be making 2,600, 4,500 or between five and 10K regularly each month with your podcast. So this has been a contributing factor to helping all three of those clients turn their podcast into an additional income stream for them. And the way that you can find it is just going to our website, growyourshow.com, but put in forward slash templates, growyourshow.com forward slash templates. And then you can actually download that template and others that could be valuable to your podcasting experience. I'll see you on the next episode.